Hello artists, today we are going to make a landscape with a background, horizon line, middle ground, and foreground. And we're going to use shading and one point perspective to make depth and space in our picture. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a horizon line a little taller or higher up on the middle of the page. So we're going to do that. And then on this line, you can create any type of nature. I am going to use the mountains that I'd like, and I'm going to make a front line of mountains and then overlap these front ones in front of a whole other set. And they're further away, so I move them back. Maybe I'd have a sunshine and even have a cloud in front of it. It's up to you how you'd like to add your atmosphere. You might have a rainbow or the moon or tornado going on. It's up to you how you would do that. Then I would add maybe a road. And I love to add a curly road, a curvy road going through the page. That's just my favorite thing to do. And from this tiny little point, this one point on the page, I'm gonna start out small and make this road grow, get larger as we get closer to the foreground, the front of the page. And then I'm going to add details on my background, still up on this horizon line. The horizon line is the line that separates the land from the sky. And so I'm adding little trees, tiny little, tr like upside down V's far away. You can make a stick and then go like little arrows. And from far away, this tree is so far tiny, you can hardly see it. If I made a tree like that on the middle ground, I might make a stick in the ground or the tree trunk and add zigzags on one side, zigzags on the other tree trunk is here and add more details because it's closer to me. I can see some of the details, maybe smush it together a little bit so it looks like a tree, but not too many. If the sun is here, I can add a shadow on one side of the tree, even on the tree trunk. You can see how fast I'm moving my pencil. I'm just kind of even adding it if the sun is hitting the tippy tops of these pine needles, put it on the bottom. In the background ones, I'm not doing that at all. I'm just going zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. But in the front, I could totally add a lot of detail. And then I always add kind of like a little patch of ground that's sitting on and a little shadow from where the sunlight is coming. You can add on the ground too if you'd like. You don't have to. This is just, you know, we're all different artists. And then if I was going to draw an even larger tree, which I can draw right in the foreground or the front, I'd even draw it a big tree and add more details on these pine needles. Each layer overlaps the other and I'm a very impatient drawer. I like to sketch everything out super fast and then add things in later. So I might even go back and back and back to this pine tree in the front just to add more details as I keep going on. I could even just outline and then add shadows. Now this one is on this side, so the, the shadowing probably is going to happen more on the right side. So confusing, but it works. It makes it look pretty cool. If I add lots of pine needles to the front, and let's say I make it too dark, I can always add eraser lines, which add more texture to it too. So this is part of making sure I have a foreground with a large object a middle ground with a medium sized object, and a background with a tiny object that's all the same object, just getting smaller as it recedes into the background, as it gets smaller into the background. So you can see I'm blending with my finger. I'm zigzagging with my sketching pencil. I'm adding all these different details to the picture. I can add tiny little sprouts growing on the ground or a pretty little flower growing here. I can add little spikes of grass around this little pathway. Spiky, spiky grass. I can add lots and lots of details. Maybe there's a pond over here. So I put a tiny little pond with grass on either side of it. And a duck, little duck in the water. You'd hardly see details. You know, he's a duck because it's duck shaped, but he's just hanging out in the water. 
And then you can use the side of your pencil to actually color in and shade. So I like the background, of course, to make it super fast, but I can just shade in areas, maybe leave it a snowy mountain on this one, or shade it in all the way. And the point of your pencil is good for details, and the side of your pencil is really, really, really good for shading things. And sometimes you need to sharpen it or find something else to use. But whatever you do, you're gonna have like a medium color, sort of like background, middle ground, foreground, but now it's like medium pencil color is the gray. The darker charcoal gray is the pressing your hardest shadows. And then the lightest is if you just leave the page white. It's pretty crazy how you can get at least three to 10 different colors, I'm sure, out of just one pencil. And if you wanted to put snow, you can just kind of erase it to find the snow showing up. Snow. So the more you work on it, the better it will look with all the details. You can even add, maybe it's a grayish sky, maybe it's a bright sky. Just kind of smoosh around all the colors till you get it to the right consistency. Maybe I'd add more trees. Maybe I'd add different kind of trees, like a little tiny bush. Maybe there'd even be a little house far away. You don't have to add that many details. It's super easy. You can add a lot of different pictures and details up close and then far away and let it all go wild until you get it to be the picture you'd like it to be. I hope you enjoy making your picture and I will hopefully get to see some of your artwork.